Hey everyone, welcome to Kyle Heath Art. Today we're going to look at the differences between acrylics and oils and answer the ever important question, which is better? Let's get to it. So first off, we'll answer the question, what are acrylics and oils made of? Acrylic paint contains pigment, a plastic binder, and water. And oil paint contains just pigment and oil. I'll talk more about the purpose of these components in a minute, but these are the standard ingredients in acrylic and oil paint. Some types of acrylics and oil may have additional stuff added to change the drying speed, the thickness of the paint, or the price. Acrylics, for example, may contain mediums that make the paint dry more slowly, or it may contain mediums that make it really fluid so you can do drip paintings. You can also get student grade acrylics and oils. These have fillers added to them so the manufacturer doesn't have to put as much of the expensive pigment into the mixture. Second, what is the difference in drying time between acrylics and oils? In short, acrylics dry fast and oils dry slowly. If you look at the screen, I've painted down acrylic paint and oil paint on different swatches and then I've waited 10 minutes. And within that 10 minute wait, the acrylic paint is already dry to the touch, except for that blobby part on the right, which has come off on my finger a little bit. And the oil is still wet. It's smudging around and getting all on my finger. The difference in drying speed is because of the components of the acrylic and oil. Like I said a minute ago, acrylic paint is made of pigment, water, and a plastic binder, something called an acrylic emulsion. This plastic binder is designed to be liquid and movable when it's wet, and then harden up when it dries, and it's made to dry quickly. Oil paint, on the other hand, dries very slowly. If I put my finger on that swatch tomorrow, it will probably take off paint too. They say that it takes six months or more for an oil painting to fully dry. I can definitely paint on the same oil palette for two, sometimes three days, and just leave the paint out. And a little pro tip for oil painters, if you want to preserve your precious oil paint for even longer, stick your palette in the freezer when you're done painting. You can pull it out and let it thaw for a bit when you're ready to paint again, and then you're back in action. Now, technically, oil paint doesn't dry at all. It cures. This is because there's no water in it, and therefore there's no evaporation going on. Instead, the oils inside the oil paint do this slow chemical process where it hardens over time. Understanding how oil paint dries can help you avoid the problem of your painting cracking. There's something in oil painting called the fat over lean rule, which you need to know if you use mediums with your oil paint. Mediums thin out an oil paint and make it less fatty, which for our purpose here means that it makes the paint dry more quickly than some paint that comes right from the tube. As you're painting your different layers, you want to use less and less medium as you go along. That's it. If you do use more medium on the top layers than the bottom, your painting may crack. A good way to understand this is to look at your neighborhood sidewalk. You'll see cracks in the sidewalk where the earth has shifted and the hard concrete wasn't able to bend. Well, the same thing happens if you put a fast drying layer of oil paint on top of a really slow drying layer. That slow drying layer underneath will shift around as it's curing. So if you have a hard layer that's dried on top that isn't able to move anymore, it'll crack like a sidewalk. So again, the way you avoid this is the fat over lean rule. You use more of your mediums at the beginning and less at the end so that stuff dries harmoniously. Next, we're going to look at the differences in color as the paint dries. And this is something that's important to know for acrylic. Acrylic paint is a little darker when it dries compared to when it's wet. This is because that acrylic binder in the paint starts off as a cloudy white color and then turns clear as it dries. 
So if you're mixing a color to look exactly like it looks on your dried canvas, the color you're mixing won't exactly match when it finally dries. It'll look darker. So when you're trying to match a dried color, you need to make the wet mixture a little lighter. I've heard that Winsor Newton has a brand of acrylic that has a clear acrylic binder. And if that's the case, the colors should look the same dry or wet. So that's something you can check out if matching exact colors is giving you problems. When you're mixing acrylic paint, you can also spray down your palette periodically with water to keep everything wet. That makes it easier to mix and match colors. On this swatch here, I've painted some yellow paint and then waited 15 minutes while periodically spraying my palette with water to keep the mixture wet. And now, as I paint the wet paint on top of and next to this dry swatch, the wet yellow paint is brighter than the dry yellow paint. Next, we'll look at blending and layering with acrylics and oils. Acrylics are definitely more suited to layering because they dry so fast. Now, you can still blend with acrylics, but you have to be really speedy in your painting and in your color mixing. And of course, you can spray down your palette to give yourself a little bit more time to mix colors. You can also buy slow drying acrylics that will allow you to do more blending and give you more time while you're mixing colors. Now, oils, on the other hand, are much more suited to blending because of how slowly they dry. If you want to layer oil paintings, you either have to add in mediums to speed up the drying time, or you have to wait a long time for it to dry naturally. For blending, though, oil painting is a total breeze. You literally have all the time in the world to mix your colors. And I personally find that a really luxurious and enjoyable feeling to not have to think about my paint drying. Now, oil painters do still paint in layers. If you're using a bunch of mediums to speed up the drying, or if you take weeks or months to finish one painting, you can do as many layers as you want. But if you're finishing a painting in one go or in a couple days, you have a finite number of layers you can work with before you just won't be able to put on more paint without making a big globby mess. If an oil painter is painting a la prima or finishing it all in one go, generally they'll tone their canvas with a bit of oil paint mixed with mineral spirits and they'll just rub in or brush in a general base color. A lot of times they'll use something like burnt sienna for that. Then after that, they'll do a thin underpainting layer, maybe with some mediums mixed in, and then they'll do a final thicker layer on top to finish it up. As soon as you get a whole bunch of oil paint on your canvas though, it becomes really difficult to paint on top of it. Everything just turns really blendy. Next, let's compare the glossiness of acrylic versus oil paint. Acrylics dry very matte. So there isn't much gloss to a dried acrylic painting unless there's been some mediums mixed into the paint to make it more shiny. Oils, on the other hand, do dry somewhat glossy. In the end, this isn't a huge difference because many painters like to add a varnish on the finished painting. This varnish not only gives whatever level of gloss or matte you'd like, but it also gives a protective layer to the painting. The first painting I'm showing here is an oil painting, and then the apple is an acrylic painting. I see a bit of a difference between these two, but not much. Next, we'll ask which is more colorful, acrylics or oils? I think that acrylic and oil paint are equally colorful. Now, I do think that the thickness or the glossiness of the paint makes a difference in how the color looks. So a matte painting looks less colorful to me than a glossy painting. As I said before, acrylic paint dries matte and oil paint dries glossy. The difference is subtle, but the glossiness of oil does make the colors vibrate. If you want this effect in acrylic though, you can always add a varnish at the end. And our next question will look at which is safer, acrylics or oil paint? Now, oil paint is notorious for being less healthy to use than acrylics, but the truth is it really depends on what else you're using when you're painting. 
Let's look at the components of acrylics and oil paint again, and we'll answer the safety question that way. First, acrylics and oils use the same pigments, so there's no difference in toxicity there. If you want the healthiest possible experience with both oil painting and acrylic painting, avoid toxic pigments like cadmium, for instance. Now, oil painting does have something of a tradition of using toxic pigments because of their specific characteristics. So if you need lead white or cadmium red for the effects that you're going for, uh, you are using toxic materials. You can mitigate this risk by using gloves and being very mindful not to touch your face while you're painting. And the only other ingredient in oil paint besides pigment is oil. Generally, it's either linseed oil or walnut oil, and these are both non-toxic. Now, for acrylic paint, your other component is the acrylic binder, and there are some toxicity issues here. As the binder dries, it off-gasses volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs, and these aren't good for you. Now, from what I understand, acrylic puts out way fewer VOCs compared to the solvents and mediums that are historically used in oil paint. But it's never a bad idea to paint in a well-ventilated area to be as healthy as possible. And this is doubly true if you're oil painting with solvents. So in my book, the absolute safest way to paint is to use oil paint with no solvents or mediums. When I paint in oils, this is exactly how I paint. And finally, if you choose to use solvents, there are some natural alternatives. Odorless mineral spirits are way better for your health than turpentine, and there are some eco-solvents that are better than odorless mineral spirits. Next, we'll look at the question of prestige when comparing acrylics and oil paints. I do think oil paints are perceived as a little bit fancier than acrylics, for that reason, I think oil paintings command a slightly higher price than acrylic paintings, but this is all just the impression that I get. And a related question, which is more expensive, acrylics or oils? And no bones about it, oil paints are more expensive. I looked up the price of my m -gram Ultramarine Blue compared to my Golden Ultramarine Blue, and a 5-ounce tube of m -gram is $33, compared to a 5-ounce tube of Golden, which is $17. So the oil paint is twice as expensive as the acrylic. Next, let's look at the question of archival quality. Will acrylics and oil paint have any differences in how long they last? And my answer is that there's no difference. Oil is more susceptible to cracking, but if you paint an oil using the fat over lean rule, both oils and acrylics should hold up equally well. It's good to know that some pigments aren't as light fast as others. When a color is not light fast, that means it will fade over time as the sun shines on it. Your tubes of paint will have a number on them telling you the light fastness of your color. Next, what is the difference in texture between oils and acrylics? In general, acrylics are thinner and more viscous than oils. Here's a little visual on the screen. I've squeezed out two different types of acrylic. The first is golden, and the second is Liquitex Basics. So you can see how they move around with my palette knife and with my brush. And then I'll do the same with oil, and you'll see that my oil paint is more buttery. It's thicker, and it holds its shape a little more than acrylics. And finally, the ultimate question, which is better, acrylics or oils? My answer is that you have to figure out which is better for you. The more you paint and experiment with different materials, the more you'll see which materials naturally work with what you're doing. If you're fighting with your materials, it'll be harder to get your vision onto a canvas. So the best material is the one that disappears into the background of your working process. And also, it doesn't have to be one or the other. In fact, you can use both acrylics and oil in a single painting, and this is how I usually paint. The one thing you need to make sure is that you don't put acrylics on top of the oils. Save the oils for when you're done with the acrylic layers. 
I would strongly suggest that you experiment with both acrylic and oil paints. I'm recently using acrylics much, much more, and it has me rethink how I paint, and it's opened up new possibilities for the things I can make. My workflow is naturally starting to use both in a single painting, and uh, I'm sure I'll have a video soon showing you how that's all looking lately. And that's it! Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something, and I'm thankful that you spent some time hanging out with me. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to help me make more of these kinds of videos, you can support me on Patreon. I've got a link to my Patreon account in the description below. Thanks, and happy painting, everyone! Thank you.